All right, man, peace. So I made a video a while ago, maybe two or three months ago, about the boxer Adrian Broner. I stated that he had a mental issue, and I correlated that with the mental problems that a lot of so-called black men have in this society. You know, And there's reasons why a lot of so-called black men have the mental problems that they have, uh, the upbringing, environment, what they're taught, what they're not taught, what they're mistaught. Uh, Adrian Broner, he's like a poster child for all of those things. Uh, he happens to have a, a gift, a talent in boxing. It, it's probably helped him, you know, preserve his life thus far. He, he would most probably be dead if it wasn't for boxing. Uh, once again, like I stated, I believe that he has a mental issue. And he basically has um, has corroborated my statements. I remember when I first made that video, some of the brothers in the comments got a little upset. Uh, no, this man has mental problems. But you know, we're going to touch on that as this video goes along. All right, moving on to another crazy fight. Adrian Broner, the former boxing champion, a guy who is very, very close with Floyd Mayweather, in a crazy situation on the Las Vegas Strip Friday evening. Got upset, shoved a woman, socked the guy in the face, and we've got video of the entire thing. It all started in Vegas Friday evening. People would come up to the guy, he was taking pictures, everything. What do you think? Door. He's a big star, so people see him, they want to take pictures with him. Especially, especially in Vegas, where he's connected to Floyd Mayweather, who's the biggest star in Vegas. Right. So he was having fun, taking pictures with people. Something set him off. And he stormed away from the group and he starts walking away. A female companion who was with him tried to go up to him and talk some sense to him, calm him down. This is what happened. <laughs> She didn't fall over and hurt herself. Yeah, yeah uh, he is very fortunate that she didn't fall over and hurt herself. Let me say this. Um, now, you know, I've done videos in the past about uh, people claiming that they were the victims of domestic violence. Uh, I've stated in the past, many women do claim that um, affluent people, athletes, entertainers, um, assault them so that they can, you know, of course, get a settlement. But I've also stated on the flip side, as a man, if you're drawn to the point where you have to lay your hands on a female, particularly if she did not hit you first, uh, you have mental problems. Number one, you don't have proper problem solving abilities. You don't have the ability to put things in proper perspective. If a woman is getting on your nerves that much, then you should disassociate yourself from her. There are many ways to remove people out of your life. You don't have to do it physically unless they're attacking you. As you can see, this woman was not attacking him. She seemed like she was trying to assist him. Um, A.B. is an example of a guy who, um, and, and this is why I like to speak on the dynamic of men, uh, male-female relationships, especially the so-called black man and black woman. He seems to think that it makes him more of a man to deal with numerous women haphazardly without testing the woman. He doesn't test these women out. And then, you know, he likes to walk around with them like trophies. And he holds and he harbors a lot of anger towards previous relationships. You could tell by a lot of the comments that he makes on his social media. A lot of these problems happen because brothers don't take the time to get to know the people that they're allowing into their circle. Either way, he put his hands on this woman. She easily could take him to court for assault. She was trying to assist him and support him. Number two, um, Adrian Broner being a, you know, a celebrity. He is a celebrity. He should have security. We live in a troll world. What do I mean by that? We live in a world where everybody's a tough guy. They want to try to provoke you with inflammatory language. They want to try to act like they're tough. They want to say rude and nasty things to you to get you to respond and react. Okay? We see that over the internet. We definitely see that in real life towards celebrities. Um, you know, back in the 1800s, when somebody looked at you disrespectfully or said something disrespectful, both of you went outside and you fought a duel to the death. There wasn't any room for trolling back then. Now everybody's looking for a settlement, right? It's very cowardly, most trolls. You see that? And it's very feminine, too. A lot of these guys, they look for, um, they look for a response and a reaction. That's something that a female does. But a lot of these guys act like bitches. That's why I say... You know, a hoe or a bitch could be a male or a female. Uh, Adrian Broner has to be smarter than that, but he has not shown that he has 
much discretion or prudence. He makes very, very bad decisions. It does not matter how talented or gifted you are. If you don't have the ability to harness those abilities within some type of maturity. Like I said, just, just my honest opinion, things are not going to end well for him. But let's see what's going on. He, he, he pushed the hell out of her right yeah. there, man. It's so weird. So moments after that, something else happened. And another guy, uh, I don't know if he was connected to Adrian or not, but he was right there on the strip. And he, he was, it seems to me like he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. But he was right there. And as he got in Adrian's walking path, Adrian uncorked with a shot and laid the guy out on the ground. You can, It's hard to see in the video, but you can definitely hear it. Take a look. <laughs> Yeah, that crack was Adrian punching the dude in the face. The guy goes down. As soon as he goes down, you can see in this video right here, he is out. And it doesn't matter. He may not have even been hit hard enough to be laid out like that, but he's definitely going to sell it, and he should. He should sell it. Because if Adrian Broner is dumb enough to do something like that, then he deserves to have to, have to, um, to issue out a financial settlement, settlement to this guy. Whether this guy was trying to calm Adrian Broner down, or if he was trying to apologize for trolling him earlier, or if he was trying to continue the trolling. Um, either way, Adrian Broner has to be much smarter than that. You have to look at yourself as a financial commodity, man. That's why I always tell cats. You have to look at yourself as somebody of value. When you look at yourself as somebody of value, you make better decisions. A lot of times cats make bad decisions. Why is that? Because they don't look at themselves as somebody of value. They look at themselves as being worthless. Man, I say this all the time. All you brothers have a talent, no matter what it is, whether it's art, writing, um, mathematics. Some of you guys may be great historians. Some of you guys may be great linguists. Some of you guys may be great choreographers. You might be you no know, good with the women, whatever the hell it is that you're good at. Maximize it and monetize it and stop wasting time looking for a hug from the so-called white man and woman. Stop wasting time putting women on a pedestal. All right? The woman was created to be a helpmeet and a servant to you, not the other way around. All right? You love them, you respect them, you cherish them, you honor them, but you do not put them on a pedestal. All right? Uh, Adrian Broner has a problem putting things in proper perspective, and people like him have to learn the hard way. Ow, yeah. He just got smacked in the face by a professional boxer. That punch had complete steam coming off of it. Uh, if Adrian was hitting him at half speed, he could rearrange his face. Yeah, not just. And he probably didn't even hit him with a closed fist. He probably just slapped the shit out of him. But a guy like Adrian Broner, who's trained, um, you know, of course, that's going to be viewed in, in any official court case as assault. He's going to have to prove that the guy hit him first and that it was self defense. There's nothing on the video footage that would show that. Uh, I mean, I'm sure that he'll probably um, be charged with aggravated assault. He'll claim that he was maybe he was threatened. Maybe he'll claim that. But nothing that he has said in the aftermath on social media has denoted that he was the recipient of a threat. It just seemed like he lost control because somebody was talking reckless. All right. When you're out there on, on the Vegas strip, people are drunk. Some people are high. A lot of these people are, are, are reckless. They just talking shit. Right, we live in a talk shit society. Everybody just talks shit. Like I said, everybody out here is a professional troll. You know? People do not think about the consequences or the repercussions of their words or actions. That's why people out here getting bodied. Adrian Broner has to understand, number one, I don't even know I don't remember how many kids the man got, five or six. Like you gotta think about those type of things. It doesn't make you a punk to have security. You know, Muhammad Ali had security. Floyd Mayweather has security. Okay? When you are a valuable commodity, you have security. The people can ask you for your autograph um, while you're standing, while, while there is a you know, six foot five, 300 pound security guard standing between you and them. That's the life that you have to live. You can't just always be a man of the people. Uh, a lot of these people out here, they're crabs. They don't spend time trying to figure out how to make themselves better. They spend their time trying to figure out how to bring you down to their level. Not just a professional boxer, a former champion, a former weight division champion. Like he won weight. Adrian Broner is not some boxing dude. He was once one of the very best boxers on planet Earth. Take that into consideration. He's 28 years old. He's 33 and three as a boxer, and he just cold cocks his dude on the street. And let me say this also: Adrian Broner has been going through a lot of depress, uh, depression, ever since he realized that he was not going to be another Floyd Mayweather. 
All right. He thought he was going to go through his career being undefeated. If you remember at one time, right before he fought Malinaji, he was talking about how he didn't want to fight Floyd because he didn't want to take he didn't want to take Floyd's undefeated record. Right. That's what he was saying. See, eventually, and this is why Floyd keeps him at arm's distance, and that's also why I keep dudes at arm's distance too, because a lot of these guys are not, um, they're not mentally stable, okay? So, you know, a lot of times when you operate according to discretion and you see things from a macrocosmic perspective, um, you got to keep people at arm's distance. They got to prove a lot to you to even let them to the point where you put a fold in your arm, you know? You got to give them the straight arm. They got to show you a lot just for you to give them the folded arm. But, uh, you know, people are wild. And that's why Floyd, you know, Floyd has taken Adrian Broner under his wing. And I sense that's why their relationship vacillates. Because Floyd understands that this guy is, is, is you no, know, he's not focused. He's not stable. And at one time, Adrian Broner was talking and acting like, he could take Floyd's undefeated record until, of course, he lost to Marcos Maidana. That was his first humbling. And that was a massive humbling. Okay? But he was building up to where he was going to try to call Floyd out. And if you remember, about a year or so ago, he did try to call Floyd out. After he beat, um, what's this guy? The, the British fighter that Floyd has. You know, the, the heavy bag. Uh, what's this guy's name? It'll come back to me. But Adrian fought one of Floyd's fighters. Uh, light-skinned dude from Britain. No, basically a sparring partner. And after he beat the guy, Adrian was in the ring and he called Floyd out. You know, and Floyd just sat in the crowd chuckling because it was like basically Floyd had a look on his face like I knew it. Theophane, that's his name. Ashley Theophane. That's the guy. Um, Adrian beat him and then he called out Floyd. See, Floyd understands a lot of these guys, they, they want to pick his brain so that they can learn his secrets. You know, and Floyd is like a grandmaster. He's not going to give you all his secrets. You know, not until he's no, not not until he knows that he's totally finished with the sport. Adrian was frustrated by that, and I believe that that's the source of a lot of their, you know, the tumultuous nature of their relationship. Adrian thought that he would go pick Floyd's brain, and that Floyd was just going to give him all his secrets. That's not that's not how grandmasters operate. All right, when you approach anybody who thinks on a grandmaster scale, they're always thinking from a defensive angle. Why does this person want to learn from me? What do they have planned? What, will they try to use these tricks against me? All right? That's how Floyd thinks. And Adrian couldn't deal with that. Now, the most shocking part to me is that he wasn't immediately arrested. Now, we know that security went and spoke with him, but he wasn't arrested and thrown in jail on the spot, which is shocking considering that that guy got lumped up and there was video of the entire situation. Well, maybe he didn't get arrested on the spot because uh, security or law enforcement, they saw some footage that you guys have not been able to present. Who knows? Maybe they know something that we don't know. Uh, either way, Adrian Broner has mental problems and, and he definitely needs help. The main help that he needs is to, is to um, get rid of his idolatry, meaning what? His worship of boxing and his worship of money and his worship of women. All, right? All those things lead to mental instability. You enjoy those things. Those things are here as a pastime. Okay? There's nothing wrong with it. Like I saw some, somebody, one of them comments... Uh, some chick was on there. You know, one of these overrighteous chicks. I don't follow sports because I don't. Look, I don't want to hear your dumb shit. When you read Exodus, the, I believe it's the 32nd chapter, it tells you about how the Israelites, they rose up and they played. All right. There's nothing wrong with, with, with you know, with engaging in uh, sports as a pastime or in watching sports. Now, when you start taking it seriously and <laughs> you're betting half your check on the game and all that other silly shit. You know, sports oftentimes can be a a uh, reflector of, you know, the human condition of human nature. You get to see who, you know, who endures, who gives up, right? who shows that that they're willing to work hard to get to what they want to achieve, who has focus. These are things that all come out in sporting events. This is why people like it, because it's a great revealer. All right. We learned a lot of things about Adrian Broner and many of his uh, more adverse situations. Right. We learned that under pressure, he becomes gun shy. Um, we learned that he is not somebody who adapts well. All right. We learned that he goes into a defensive shell whenever the pressure comes. You know, these are things that we learn. You know, all type of fight. Look at Muhammad Ali. When you put the pressure on him, he came out firing. All right. Th this is what we learn about people. We learn about people through adverse situations. And the best way that we see how people respond 
is in is in the sports world. And a ton of witnesses. Yeah, a ton of witnesses. Video on the Las Vegas Strip. How does Adrian Broner end up? In I, I, I gotta tell you, I talked to Adrian Broner, and he wouldn't go into the actual incident, but he is worried. He is concerned about his uh, future. Uh, hoping it's not inside a jail cell, and he's worried that boxing that he's going to be shunned from the sport. Now. Well, he's about to be shunned from the sport because he's shown that he's not an A-class fighter. He's shown that whenever he's put against A-class competition that he gets thoroughly outshined. All right. I mean, the best performance that he's ever had against higher level competition was against Maidana. I mean, when you compare that to what happened when he fought uh, Porter or um, Mikey Garcia, I mean, at least he fought back against Maidana. But he was forced to because Maidana put so much pressure on him and just kept coming and kept throwing punches. Uh, he was going to get knocked out if he didn't fight back. All right, but it took him years to get over the psychological damage from that fight. Um, but he just he just clammed up against Garcia and against Porter. So I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens to Adrian. Adrian is still going to have a little a little niche in the sport because, you know, of his um you know his personality, how vivacious his personality is. He'll always be able to court a certain audience, but he pretty much has that Zab Judah niche right now. He's the wild card. You never know what's going to happen in his fights. You know, you watch him just like you watch Zab. You root for him. You hope that they finally can can uh, get over that mental hurdle. But you know, they never will because the mental hurdle is the is the most imp you know is the most improbable hurdle to get over. So I mean, we'll see. After uh, well, well, this video, well, after this, he went to the social media and he started tweeting. And he wrote, "quote I know I got problems. I just want to help." Well, you know, when you see cats type stuff like that, you have to evaluate it. Are they serious or are they just? Um, are they just looking for attention? All right. When you say, I know I got problems, I just want help. That means that you have to be receptive to information and you have to be willing to give up on all the things that are causing you the problems. So we know with Adrian Broner, he, you know, he has an alcohol problem. Am I saying he's an alcoholic? No, not necessarily. But as a top notch athlete, he really shouldn't be drinking alcohol at all. At all. Uh, I don't know if he smokes marijuana or not, but he should stop that as well. He probably needs to stop hanging out with some of the people that he's hanging out with. But we know how hard that is for some niggas, man. Uh, he needs to truly be focused on on higher things. But you have to be receptive to that type of knowledge and information. Uh, he probably is going to have to let go of, of most of his stable of hoes. You know, again, a lot of these guys, every time I mention a man should have more than one woman, I get all these I get all these simps in my comments talking about all oh, what the Bible. You know, you know what killed me by a lot of these guys? And I mentioned this before, and it's not to digress. Um, a lot of these guys who view having more than one woman as a stumbling block, nine times out of ten, they don't even have one woman. It's like the women who don't have a man who are always trying to give relationship advice to a woman who's in a relationship. A lot of these guys, I'm telling you, you read the comments and you read some of these guys that, that you know, it's a stumbling block to them that, that you can have more than one woman, even though the Bible explicitly says it. You know for a fact, number one, these guys have very little um, experience with women, if any. Number, <laughs> number two, they put the woman on a pedestal. Number three, they're looking for this magical, mystical relationship where, um, you know, some woman's going to come and finish their sentences and you're going to finish her sentences and all this other silly shit. You know what I'm saying? That's why these guys, they come on the comments and they just start acting like hoes. Whenever the information comes out that, yes, you can have more than one woman. Like I said, it doesn't mean that you should. Adrian Broner right now is a guy who needs to let go of the stable of women that he has. Why is that? Number one, when you have a woman, whether it's one woman or, or more than one woman, um, the woman has to follow your spirit to a degree. Does it mean that she has to agree with you at all times? No, it does not. But it does mean that she has to respect your perspective. All right. If you're dealing with a female, you might like her. She likes you. You dealing with the scriptures? I don't, you know, you tell her, I don't look, I don't eat pork, I don't eat shrimp, crab, or lobster. Um, she can't buck up against that. In her own spare time, you never know what she's doing. She could be at Lobster Fest, for all you know. But she has to respect the fact that you don't eat that. Now, as the relationship progresses, if y'all get closer, then yeah, she's gonna have to let go of a lot of that shit. But that's up to you. See, brothers, look, every time I speak, I speak according to reality. I'm not gonna try to feed y'all no lame, silly shit. All right.
like a lot of these guys do with their fake over-righteousness, talking all this crazy, silly nonsense. Don't even have no damn woman. Log off of YouTube and run and get, get a damn bottle of Vaseline, be, be skiing all over their room. Damn room look like a, a glazed donut. Frost in their damn windows. <laughs> they want to come back on YouTube. Hey, you know, the Lord said you can only have one woman. Um, I'm logging back off right now. Mom, where's the, where's the Jergens? I want to help. I need someone to talk to. And then he says, who will come talk to me? To me Look at this. He's talking about, I need someone to talk to. Who will come talk to me? Uh, this brother has a lot of problems. But to me, that's much more of a reflection of his father, Adrian Broner's dad. You know, most of you brothers who watch boxing, you'll know he's oftentimes in the ring with Adrian. You know, he's about five feet tall and about six feet wide. Obviously, the, the, um, the man did a very poor job raising his son in regards to imparting some type of, of wisdom or decision making. And the proof of that is that Adrian Broner is on the Internet looking for somebody to come talk to him as opposed to calling up his dad and knowing that his dad can give him some words of wisdom, some words of guidance. All right. Talk to me. To me, this seems like a message that's directed toward Floyd Mayweather because Floyd is a guy who has taken Adrian under his wing before. When Adrian had gotten arrested, when Adrian had gone to jail. <laughs> Look at that picture with Floyd. Let me rewind it back for a second. Oh, when, Ad when Adrian had. You know something going on when um when Floyd Mayweather is the most functional dude in a photo. <laughs> right now, Floyd's in the middle of a fuck up sandwich. Got Adrian Broner to his left and, and Kevin Hart to his right. Just totally fucking up their own life. Adrian had gotten arrested, when Adrian had gone to jail, when Adrian was accused of beating somebody up at a bowling alley. Floyd Mayweather wasn't just there for him, he let him live in his house. You remember there were those messages that some people thought were even suicidal and Floyd Mayweather came to Adrian Broner's uh, right. rescue. But it right, but you know what? Um, you know, you, you reach a point in life, even if you're a friend or a brother, where you say to yourself, you know, this person is so dis uh, self-destructive and so dysfunctional. Um, this person is coming to me. Sometimes people come to you not because they want your help, but because they're looking to bring down somebody along with them. They might not even know that, but you have to have the discretion to know that. Sometimes you have to know how to cut people off at the right time because they're about to go on a, on a kamikaze mission and they want to bring you with them. All right. I've always thought that Adrian Broner had a very unhealthy fascination with Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather is another person that he's put on a pedestal. All right. Idol worship never leads to anything good. Uh, once again, Adrian Broner reminds me a lot of that character from um, Carlito's Way, Benny Blanco from the Bronx. You know, but anyway. But at this point in time, it doesn't seem like Floyd is, is opening his arms to Adrian Broner. It seems like he's actually kind of keeping him at a distance. And Adrian's upset about that. Well, Floyd Mayweather is smart enough to know that Adrian Broner was trying to um, inject himself into Floyd's life so that he could learn Floyd's secrets, his fight secrets. Right? Floyd did not want to give him his fight secrets. So, you know, now Adrian pretty much, uh, you know, has a love-hate relationship with Floyd. I mean, doesn't a time come where you got to just say enough is enough with your Floyd Mayweather? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, there comes a time in life where you have to evaluate your life. Um, you know, not to use a Scientology term, but you have to audit your life. And you have to see what's necessary and what's not. That's something that Adrian Broner has to do. You know, once again, you look at the film The Last Dragon. Uh, it's about a supremely talented so-called black man who goes through the entire film trying to be validated by other people, right? Looking for somebody else to guide him when he's already reached the level that he, you know, is supposed to reach. And now it's time for him to teach others. All right. That film had a, had a lot of spiritual and biblical connotations. All right. And, and of course, they slipped in some of their left handed, their left hand Luciferian philosophies as well. But, you know, when you look at that film, the main thing that you have to get out of that film is that the so-called black man has to view himself as the master. You know, that film should have been two minutes long. As soon as the Asian man told Bruce Leroy he got to find the master, Bruce Leroy would have said, thank you. Don't mind if I do. And the credit should have rolled. Right. Should have went and found vanity and, you know, stopped her from playing a hoe and had some nice, good looking little kids with her. And the, and the film should have ended there. But because... He did not have a ruling class mentality. He had to go throughout the entire film. Um, 
looking for validation from others, man. That, that shit plays out all the time in real life with the so-called black man. And you see it with Adrian Broner. He's, look, he's still looking for Floyd to validate him. Floyd is looking at him like, dude, it's time for you to validate yourself. You don't want to come sign with the money team. You have your own promotional label. So you, you should not be looking to me anymore as, a, um, as an idol. You have to look at yourself as, you know, as your own power, right? You have to look at yourself as a monarch. You have to declare your decrees and stick by them. Be a man. Whether like I am done with this dude, he, no. he's beyond help. See, these guys have a good relationship, and they, they they've been seen together. They're, they're, they're friends, but yeah. Floyd in no way has any sort of control over Adrian Broner. Hey, yeah, he doesn't have any control over Adrian Broner. I mean, nor should he. Adrian Broner's a grown man. All right, and when I say he doesn't have any control over him, meaning, um. Adrian Broner is the type of dude, at least from a distance, he appears to be the type of dude who will run up and ask Floyd for advice and then, and then not do it. And then claim that Floyd was being judgmental. I think that Floyd is tired of dealing with that. I think that after a while, when people are constantly trying to come into your life, uh, asking for help, and they don't really want the help, sometimes they have to go. All right? Because they're trying to drag you down with them. Um, like, I, like I've already mentioned... Uh, that film, Jason's Lyric, with Alan Payne and Bakeem Woodbine. Um, that was a very good film. came out in the early 90s. It's about a young man who had a brother who was always getting into destructive behavior. He almost, and it almost cost them both their life. Alan Payne, it almost cost him his life, I should say, because he was always trying to save his brother. Sometimes you have to know when to let go. Um, you know, you have to take the training wheels off and you got to ride that bike on your own. You always can't have somebody behind you holding the holding a seat for you, trying to guide you. Adrian Broner, it's time for him to grow up and be a man. He also has no obligation. He doesn't no, have to do not at do all. It. Like, they, by the time Floyd and Adrian Broner got, became friends, Adrian Broner was already a world champion. Mm -hmm. like, so, so, like, really, if A.B. wants help and needs help, he should find yeah. the help from within well, here himself. Thing. Exactly. Um, finally, Van Jones says something, you know, worth listening to. A.B. has to find the help within himself because he clearly doesn't trust his dad and he clearly just wants attention from Floyd. You know, and it's a very, very um, sick and sad dynamic that A.B. has with Floyd because I say sick because it's an unhealthy fascination. All right. It's almost like how he would view a woman that he has a crush on. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it to me, it, it goes that that far and that deep. That's why I think Floyd also keeps him at arm's distance because, you know, it gets a little um uh, it gets a little perverse, to be quite honest with you, when a man is that infatuated with you. Okay? That's why I say, that's why I always re reiterate over and over again. I don't want brothers to talk about how they fans of mine. I, I'm not, I'm, please, you know, I make these videos so that um, I, could, I can share my perspective on certain things. People going to agree, some people going to disagree. It, it is what it is. That's fine. But um, Adrian Broner has never been taught how to be a grown man. And I think that what's impeding him is his associations with a lot of people that he's had since his childhood. Sometimes you got to leave certain people behind so that you can grow a little bit as a man. All right. When you know somebody since you were a child, they're always going to look at you as a child. Number one, I hope the guy hits okay because that looked like because that really first of all, forget about whether or not Adrian Broner needs help. Just that guy right. didn't need any help. Yeah, and then the second dude who got popped in his face. And the second thing is, if, if Adrian Broner is mentally unwell, and in my opinion, it seems to me here's a guy who's mentally unwell. Yes, I've said that a long time ago. He has meant he has a, a, a mental issue. I won't say mental illness, but he has a mental issue that he needs assistance with. Uh, can he get that from a? Uh, a psychoanalyst or a psychologist or a psychiatrist, I don't know. Um, I know what, what he needs help from, which is um, a spiritual understanding uh, in the scriptures of who he is so, he, so that he can stop idolizing men and women. That's not a good look, all right? A relationship with a man or a woman can end tomorrow. It could end in the next second, all right? You could be on the phone with your, with, with your wife or your girlfriend, and it could be, I love you, I love you back, and then... You go to sleep, you wake up, you look at your phone, there's a three-page text message talking about, you know, I just can't do this anymore and all this, right? Just like we saw on that show, Insecure. Okay? That happens. You have to look upward for stability, not on this plane of existence. You're never going to get that here. These people here are, are capricious. They're whimsical. All right? 
And a lot of people get off on trying to get you to trust them. And once they've, they feel like they've earned that trust, then they can go through the, through the ritual of breaking the trust so that they can feel ultimately empowered by crushing somebody else's spirit. That's why it's dangerous to put your trust in another person. He needs to get that help, and I'm hoping if they really are friends, if he really cares about him, hopefully he'll fund him, he'll do whatever it takes to get him the help that he needs. Because, look, we don't want to see this guy in more trouble. First of all, you don't want to see him in any trouble, but what you really don't want him to be, and I love A.B. in the past as much as anybody, but you don't want to see him being a danger player. Exactly. He can really hurt people. Yeah, he can really hurt people. And, you know, it shows you how, how off he is. He's walking with that woman, that young lady, and, you know, he's supposed to be thinking about enjoying his evening with her, uh, going wherever they're going, going back to his, you know, his, his uh, hotel room and handling his business with her. Instead, he's out in the street fighting and scrapping with people. Shows you where guy's head's at or not at. But anyway, hopefully the brother can find it in himself to uh, receive the help that he needs. A peace.